so good morning. Uh, my name is Chad Jennings, and I'd like to introduce this session, and then I'll introduce uh, the speakers here. So in these fireside chats, Debanj and I are going to join with a customer well, once a month to go through that customer's story, their journey, some of the successes and lessons learned, and we'll be repeating this on a, a monthly cadence. Today, we are delighted to be kicking this off with uh, Ethan Dickinson, Associate Director of uh, Analytics Infrastructure at Wayfair. And joining Ethan and me is our very own Dibanjan Saha, who's the General Manager of Data and Analytics at Google Cloud. And I'm Chad, I'm a Product Manager in Dibanjan's team. With no further ado, Ethan, can I ask you to introduce the audience here to Wayfair? And then Dibanjan, I'll hand it right off to you to get started. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. So to start off, Wayfair is a global e-commerce company focused on home decor. So we want to help people find the perfect items for their home. To do that, we connect thousands of suppliers across the globe with these customers through a kind of delightful, personalized web interface. We run our core site, wayfair.com, and then several lifestyle brands that are focused on specific demographics. Okay, gotcha. So that'll be, that'll be an important context for everybody viewing if they're not already a Wayfair customer which to be honest, I'm sure a lot of the people watching already are. Okay, so with that context, Dibanjan, please take it away, sir. All right, thank you, Chad. And Ethan, thank you for joining us. We are delighted to have you. You know, by the way, for full disclosure, I'm a very happy Wayfair customers. And you can see in the background, this uh, geometric bookcase that you see, that's from Wayfair. One thing, you know, I want to know, and a lot of our audience would like to know is some of your use cases. I mean, we are really, a you know, want to get some uh, insight into how you use data and analytics to address the business challenges that you have to drive outcome for your customers and business. So if you can share some examples, that will be great. Yeah, great question. And so first off, very excited to be here. Thanks for having me. One of the great things about kind of working in analytics at Wayfair is that we really have a convergence between three areas of really fascinating data. So first off, we're an e-commerce company. We have all the challenges that people would expect. Um, so monitoring our website, what customers are doing on it, trying to personalize that content. Then we actually run our own global proprietary logistics network. So we have a lot of really fascinating problems around operational management, route optimization, warehouse optimization, delivery optimization. And then the last one, which I think is kind of unique to a company like Wayfair, is the merchandising problem. So when you go to a friend's house, you don't want to see that they have the exact same couch that you do. Everyone kind of wants their home decor to be very personalized. So to support that, we have an incredibly diverse selection of products, which provides some unique challenges from the catalog management perspective. How do we actually help a customer find the perfect couch when we have thousands, tens of thousands, or in the case of categories like wall art, potentially millions of options? where analytics comes in is those three areas are most valuable when they're brought together. Um, so one of the areas that we're very proud of is that we work closely with our supplier partners. And one of the ways we do that is we help provide them with insights into their business. So we want to be able to do things like tell a supplier, hey, we know there's a large demand in this category and you could surface your products more highly if you made these adjustments to your merchandising decisions. If you told us more about them, you added some tags, we could potentially help customers find this more easily and drive revenue both for you and help the customers out. Getting all that data in one place to be able to provide that kind of business value is obviously where the core challenge of a lot of our analytics is. Um, and so to do that, we really need scalable, flexible analytics that can process this large volume of data coming in from different systems and combine it to produce those enriched insights that are going to drive business value. Cool. That, that's all. Very, very insightful. So can you share a little bit about your data and analytics infrastructure that you use to address some of the use cases and business challenges that you have? Yeah, so these analytics use cases kind of range from you know, real-time insights and decision-making to more batch offline operations like model training. So to make that all work, our first step for almost all data is going to be a message bus of some kind. So something like Kafka or PubSub. If our applications can get data into that system, it's very easy for us to then make it available to the systems that we need for either real-time or batch processing. From there, it will end up in a data lake. And the, the technologies behind that are kind of evolving, as we'll talk about in this conversation. And from there, it might be processed and pulled into a data warehouse for more traditional kind of BI consumption. I see. So, but, you know, your data is coming through Kafka and PubSub, then it lands in a data lake, and then you curate that and put in a data warehouse, and then you probably have a dashboard and uh, other BI engines in front of it. 
And if you map that to various different Google products that you are using in your you know, platform, how does it look like? I mean, uh, what do you use for, for example, you've talked about PopSub and Kafka. Do you use Dataflow? Do you use uh, Dataproc and BigQuery and Looker, et cetera? Yeah, so we use um, all of those products that you mentioned. So we use Dataflow for some of our PubSub ingest, uh, essentially all of our PubSub ingest, if data is going into PubSub. Our data lake is where it gets interesting. So we use both Dataproc and BigQuery. And actually, we regard both BigQuery storage and Dataproc on GCF as equivalent from our data lake perspective. Where we actually land the data depends on the access profile. So if it's kind of well-structured data that's going to be frequently accessed, we might actually land it directly in BigQuery through BigQuery streaming and skip the, the GCS landing zone. And we can do that because we're confident that the data proc offerings for things like BigQuery storage connectivity mean that the data is still equally accessible in a way that's transparent to our end users on our data proc clusters. From there, we extensively use Looker uh, for kind of our curated dashboards when we really want to have that business experience of a high level summary where you can then drill into diagnostics and understand what's driving the kind of top level business metric. And then we've also seen explosive growth in the use of Data Studio for more kind of operational reporting that's very easy to spin up directly on top of BigQuery. I see. And what are your data sources? Where is this data coming from? So a lot of our data is in our operational SQL stores. So that's where a lot of our data will be generated from. The second major source is just going to be applications. So many of our applications may generate events directly to Kafka, where they'll then be kind of processed and transcribed to either BigQuery storage or GCS. I see. Cool. So you, of course, have a lot of choices, right? I mean, you know, as a customer, you can go to various different platforms. You can pick various different products. Why did you decide to choose GCP and some of the products that you mentioned? Yeah, so we were really looking for products that could enable us to focus on that, that core value proposition of our analytics, which is that collecting all this data in the same place will allow our data scientists and analysts to produce insights that can really drive the business. So we needed systems that we were confident could scale with the volume of data that we were putting in there, and that had relatively low operational costs to do that. We had worked with a number of kind of on-premise systems, and things like even the cost of kind of going out and getting new surveys to expand a Hadoop cluster could kind of unacceptably constrain our ability to ingest and derive insights from the data our business was generating. So we had worked previously with Google on some of our storefront expansion. So being able to kind of dynamically and elastically scale our, our web service that was supporting the buying experience. And that had been a really great experience that gave us confidence in Google's technology's ability to scale to the volume that we needed. Knowing that, we then kind of drilled in and made sure that within the analytics stack, offered in GCP, there were the specific technologies that we needed to serve each one of our business use cases. And we did some validation there. BigQuery has been a, a, an especially kind of popular and successful product that has really enabled a lot of the adoption. So you started with BigQuery, then you gradually added other products around that. Is that the way you started? We, we're in the process of a, a ongoing cloud migration. And we found that it's important to achieve kind of some early success. And so we took the approach of moving many of our kind of end products. So items like Looker and Data Studio first, before you move the processing ELT and ETL behind them. And BigQuery is one where it's very easy to start getting data in directly. Um, it's got great kind of connectivity to uh, open source data formats like Parquet, as well as flexibility with things like BigQuery streaming. So we could immediately get data in there pull that up in Looker or Data Studio and show that to an executive as kind of, here's the value proposition, this is fast, it's real time. Well, we work to migrate more of the kind of data plumbing behind the scenes. I see. So um, that's very, very insightful and probably going to be very helpful for others who are thinking about using BigQuery and other products the way you have been using it. Kind of moving along, you know, some of our fundamental tenets and want to get your feedback on that when you build our products and various different features is open, intelligent, and flexible. Let me explain a little bit what we mean by that. We want our platform to be open, right? Both in terms of supporting open source uh, products, supporting open APIs for cloud native products, you know, expand beyond GCP to for example, go to AWS that and Azure as we are doing with BigQuery, Omni, et cetera. And we also are very, very focused on integrating AI ML seamlessly with our analytics platform, right? For example, things we have done with BigQML, which is very, very popular. 
And we also understand that our customers have choice and we want it to be as flexible as possible for them in terms of those choices, right? Whether it is a product choice or whether it is, for example, various different types of pricing or other things that they can pick from our products. Now, you know, as our partner and customers, do you think those are the right tenants to focus on? Is that something that helped you in deciding which platform you are going to use? So I think any of your customers would probably be, not being entirely honest with you, said they didn't have some concerns about vendor lock-in with products like BigQuery. Um, and obviously that's something that we had to evaluate. And so the stance of kind of promoting flexibility and the embrace of open source solutions in things like Dataproc and then Composer slash Airflow has been really great, both from giving us the confidence that we're not investing heavily in kind of proprietary technology that would be hard to migrate and in making it easier to kind of adopt and get value out of those tools. On the openness front, we're also really appreciated kind of the integrations uh, from the data perspective, how easy it is to get data into the various platforms, as well as the consistent access model. The standardization on Google IAM gives us confidence that our data is accessible by the people that it needs to be accessible by while still being secure. Okay. And even for, you know, the cloud native platform that we have, like BigQuery and Dataflow, what we are focusing on is to provide an open API on top of that. If you look at Beam, for example, which is an open API on Dataflow, which also is supported with uh, Spark and Flink, et cetera. Or if you look at Zeta SQL, which is the Google SQL open source version of it, which, you know, for example, you can run on Spark, right? Or, you know, in future, you would like to support it on Presto, for example. Are those things that resonate with you? I mean, do you think those are the right things to do? Definitely. And from two aspects. So I think the one that people think about a lot is the, the lock-in perspective. But one of the other underappreciated aspects is that that actually makes kind of migrations like the one we're going through much easier. So we have a need for stream processing. Not all of our data is necessarily going to be ready or accessible in PubSub to be used in Dataflow, for example. But the fact that we can onboard teams with something like Flink and Beam earlier on, and then they can get they can have confidence that kind of their skill set and processes will be able to migrate as we swap out those backend solutions can also be very valuable. Cool. So um, in closing, thank you again for being our partner and our customer. We really appreciate it. If there is one thing that you, know, you could ask from the Google team, what would that be? What is in your wish list? Uh, so this is a tough question because you know, like many of your customers, uh, I'm sure we have a lot of asks. And I, I think that what this boils down to is that what we find very valuable about the Google Cloud Platform is the availability of a lot of these super valuable kind of managed, what we view as Legos. So things like your DLP API that can be composited together with other Google tools to really build compelling applications for our users. And so we, our ask is essentially that you continue to focus on kind of well-managed, well-defined services that we can figure out the best way to kind of slot into our business. Things like the managed Metastore for Hadoop, the, the BigQuery storage API to continue to build out the capabilities there are all very valuable to us because we can use them for kind of the obvious options and then also to really build compelling integrations with our other internal tools. Cool. That's very good feedback. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you again for joining us. I'm going to hand it over to Chad now for part two of this. Thank you again. Sure. No problem. Just hang on one sec. I'm ordering a new couch. Okay. okay. <laughs> All done. I'll have to shift a couple of guitars around, but I can manage it. Ethan, thank you so much for joining us for that. Dabanjan, thanks very much for, for, you know, for doing that, that interview. Like I said before, these fireside chats will come back once a month and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you all next month. So uh, thanks very much, everyone. Mm -hmm.